Okay, good afternoon students. Uh, today uh, we are having English lesson and for today's lesson we are going to have uh, functional writing. Uh, as you all know that uh, in English we usually have three papers, but these three papers we have one very important paper that is paper one. In this paper one we usually have a section which is uh, uh, a function writing session, uh, a function writing part that usually carries around 20 marks, not around 20 marks. Be exact. So this is, this area is the is an area that I tell students that you can get 18 out of 20, and this is an area that you can accumulate as much as as many marks as possible. If only you do the right thing, if only you know how to write the function writing and do the right format. So uh, you you know, and of course your teach we with your teachers you have gone through uh, the different function writing, and but for this lesson we are going to do business letters, and in this case we are going to do letter of inquiry and letter of request, and you're going to see the difference between the two so you need to know how to write the right format for you to get the marks because when it comes to 20 marks uh, how the function writing are marked we usually have format which usually have six marks then we have uh, language which usually four marks then we have uh, now the body that you're going to write the body that you're going to write that is usually this is uh, 10 marks then this is supposed to have 10 marks and you're going to break them down into which the 10 marks comprises of what. So that is very, very important. So for today's lesson, we are going to do business letters. And in this case, we are starting with the first one, a uh, letter Now, as the word inquiry uh, suggests, I, I tell students that it is always good that you understand what the content or maybe what the letter is talking about. So when talking about the letter of inquiry here, we are looking at you writing a letter to a company, you writing a letter to a different organization and trying to inquire about their services, about their goods and about their different things that they usually have. So in this case, of course, the letter of inquiry is the letter that you sent to a different organization, a different company to inquire about their goods and their services. So here we're going to look at the format and basically when you're looking at letters, uh, business letters, these are of Official letters. You need to understand that that these are official letters. So that means that when looking at official letters, we are going to look at the format, the official format of writing an official letter. That's very very important. So let's go down to the format of this letter, and then we see what are some of the different categories that we need to have when it comes to these letters. So we are going to start with the format, and I've said that this is. Uh, an official letter which means that you're going to have two addresses so number one that the first thing that you need to, to have when it comes to the format is how to write the address now this address we have two ways in which we write the address and i know that you are aware of the two uh, then we have the block format and then we have the indented uh, format in this case if you choose to use the block format you need to know the rules if you choose to use the indented format then you need to know the rules so the address, we have the two ways in which you can write them, but we have the block and then we have the indented. But now the most important bit here when it comes to address, uh, when it comes to official letters, we have two address. We are going to have the sender's address. Uh, and then we are going to have the receiver's address. In other books, uh, this is referred to as recipient's address. Of course, this is the, the, the company or the organization that you are sending the letter to. So it has to be here. So those are the two things that you have to have. You have to have the sender's address and then you have to have the receiver's address. That is the first thing. Now, number two, you have to indicate the date below the sender's address. Assume you're doing the block method. Any method that you're going to use, the block method and the indented uh, format, you must indicate the date. That is the next thing. You must indicate the date. And mostly we advise the students to make sure that you uh, write the date in this format. Like for instance, if today is 12th, then say 12th uh, April uh, 2020. Don't stroke, stroke like that. This is the, the right way to write the date. And this one, I've said, this one is written below the sender's address. That is the next thing. Number three, what you need to write uh, as part of the format is the salutation. The salutation now this salutation this is where you write the dear sir dear madam and we advocate 
stroke that dear sir stroke madam just write dear sir maybe you write dear madam don't stroke the two uh, so that is the next thing that you write dear uh, sir stroke madam that is the salutation bit that is the next thing that you observe when it comes to the format number four the next part when it comes to format uh, we are looking at the subject here on the subject this is what we refer to as re then you write re then you write your subject here must be written in capital letters and must be underlined here you basically tell us what are you in we are looking at the letter of inquiry so here you're inquiring about are you inquiring about certain goods about a certain service so you write in capital letters and you make sure that you underline that that is very very important some students go ahead and write re that is wrong so you're supposed to write re which should be written in capital letters and again should be underlined that is the next thing when it comes to the format of writing these letters number five the next bit that you need to look at when it comes to writing these letters is the body now under this category or other body this is where you specifically talk about why are you writing this letter here you write your you write it in paragraph form. So here we are going to have different paragraphs. And these paragraphs, of course, we have going to have the introduction paragraph, we're going to have the, 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 the purpose paragraph, and then we are going to have the conclusion purpose, uh, the conclusion paragraph. So here basically we are just looking at three paragraphs, should be brief, but should again be straight to the point. If for instance you are looking for a service, ask them about that service ask them uh, how do they do it maybe if, if, if it's a good do they deliver and if again if they deliver do they do you require to pay for the delivery and such kind of logistics so make sure that here you are very specific you you ask every other detail that you need to know and you need to inquire about your good and maybe your service that is number five then number six on the format basically on the format uh the next part is the signing of part this is where signing off and then this is where because this is an official letter uh, you need to write yours faithfully yours faithfully then after that you go ahead and sign then you write your name so basically this is what we are going to look at as part of the body so when we'll be marking we'll be looking at this are going to be six marks so first of all we'll be looking at do you have the address if that's that is one mark do you have the date that is again one mark do you have salutation that is one mark do you have the subject one mark do you have body one mark and then do you have the signing of part that is one mark so in total before we even go ahead and look at what have you written this is the format that you're first of all going to make sure that we have and we're going to look at it do you have the address do you have the date salutation subject then the body that is on your paragraph uh, on your, your body part and then the last bit is on the signing off if you miss any of these parts of course you're not good to score the total six good marks so that is uh the format that you're looking at uh, when it comes to the letters all the letters all the business letters be it uh, a letter of inquiry a letter of request an application letter that is the format that you're looking at let's just go through the the addresses the two the two types of address that you, the way you write them Let's start with the block method. Block methods. And then we we'll go ahead and look at the indented method. And we're going to just do them at uh, the same time. Indented method. Now assume this is your book. Of course, this is how your book is. As students, make sure that you follow. This is your book. Now, if you're doing the block method, we are going to start with the sender's address here. So this is the sender's address. Then you skip a line, then you go to the next bit and you write your receiver's address. Make sure that you have written the sender's address, you have written the date. Remember that you have written the date and you skip a line, then you skip another line, then write the receiver's address. The next thing that you do, again you skip another line, then you go to the next bit, that is the salutation. That is the salutation. Again, you skip another line, then you go to the next part that we are referring to as the subject. That is, we are writing, we are writing them that as re. Here, we've said that you write it in capital letters and you make sure that you underline. 
you go ahead and write your body, assume this is your whole body. Then you go to the signing of deed, signing of part. Here you write yours, yours faithfully, then you sign, then you write your name. What if you don't sign? If you don't sign, you don't score because this is written. This is what you have written. If you don't sign, and then you have just written your name, then you're not, you're not going to you're going to lose the mark that is on the signing off part. Remember, you can be told to send this through an email. So when you're told to send any, le any letter through email, that means that you're going to look at two things. You're going to look at the format of writing an email and the format of writing the letter itself. So you need to know the two things. But number one, you need to know how to write an email. That, that of course, you're going to look at it uh, on another lesson. And then number two, you have to know how to do the, the format of writing the letter. Those, those are two things that you're going to look at. Now assume you've been told to send this through email. If you're sending this through email, you can sign uh, on, the on, on the laptop or maybe your computer. Then that means that you're just not going to sign if you're sending that through email. That is the only difference that we have there. This is the blocked method. Everything has to move from the margin. Note that. Everything has to move from the margin. Up and including your signing off has to move from the, from the margin. Make sure that you get that. It's very, very important. Let's come to the next, the next one. The indented method. Now, this one is slightly uh, different from this, but it doesn't have to confuse you. Now, the first thing, of course, that you start with is the sender's address. How do you write it? Of course, it has to go like this, kind of slanty. It has to go kind of slanty. That is number one. Of course, go ahead and write the date below, below it. You come this other side. This is where you're going to write the receiver's address. Again, it has to be kind of slanting. It has to again be slanting like that. Slanting like that, you start with your organization box and the town and all that has to be slanting like that. The next thing, of course, is the salutation. Here you also skip a line and then you go direct to salutation. So this is where you're going to write your salutation. Then you skip a line, again you write your subject. Now this is the difference. The subject doesn't, it doesn't have to start from the margin. The subject will start away from the margin, a bit, some, some inches away from the margin, so it has to be somewhere there. So this is where you write your re, and the rest are, you know, the rest remains, that it has to be in capital letters, and it must be underlined. Make sure that you get that. Now let's go to the next back part, that is the body. Now remember, when you're writing your body, using the indented method, paragraphs have to move from the margin. That is, when you're starting your paragraphs, they have to be away from the margin. Make sure that you get that. All the paragraphs that you're going to have, make sure that all of them start away from the margin. Once you're done with your body, the next part is signing off. The signing off part, the difference is, again, it's not going to be from the margin. It has to be away from the margin. Away from the margin, and you make sure that you write it there. And then, of course, you make sure that you have everything. You write yours faithfully. You write your... Uh, you are faithfully, then you sign, then you write your name. Make sure that you get that. So that is something that you need to make sure that you understand well. So we have the two methods, and you make sure that you understand the two methods. This is the indented method. This is the block method. And the difference mainly here is brought forth by the way you write your addresses. The two addresses are the sender's address to show the difference. Now, some students go, go ahead and mix the two methods. Never do that. So we advise that if you pick the block method, stick to the block method from the beginning up to the end. Again, if you uh, choose the indented method, stick to it. That is from the beginning up to the end. Let me say something here. That when you're using the blocked method, uh, the paragraphs have to start from the margin. All your paragraphs have to start from the margin. So again, make sure that you get that difference. So let's look at uh, some of the characteristics of these letters and uh, we go ahead and use them below. I hope it feels clear. It's a question. Okay. Kayla? A question? Okay with your, uh, um, yeah. 
in the block method, do you include the date in the address or you skip a line then write the date? The date. Okay, now the blocked method, we've said this is the blocked method here and the sender's address. I've said that below the sender's address, you skip a line, you skip a line and then you include your date there. You skip a line and then you include your date and then you go ahead again. After you have written your date, you skip another line and then you go to the next one. That is the receiver's address. Right? Okay, that was our question from Lucy. If there's any other question, comment it down there. Good. Now, Oscar, is there? Oscar. So let's look at the characteristics or the features. Let's just call them features of official letters. Features of official letters. Now, these features, as I said, uh, that we have different business letters. That means that we have different official letters. We can have a letter of inquiry, a letter of request, a recommendation letter. We can have an application letter. So the features that we're going to look at, they cut across all the letters. They cut across all these letters. So that means that you're going to make sure that all these features, when you're writing any of the official letters, you make sure that you stick to those uh, features. Let's look at them and uh, make sure that you follow up. Number one is the formality. Number one is the formality. Now here, when you're looking at formality, you have to remain formal as much as possible. Avoid, uh, you know, avoid idle talks, avoid gossips, avoid, you know, hearsay that I had you have this, I had that you package this, and I had, you know, avoid such. So it has to be, when it comes to formality, it has to be, uh, remain formal. That means that even the language that you're going to use, it must be formal as much as possible that is number one that is number one feature number two the next feature that you need to make sure that you have is the language the language this one when you're looking at language here the language must be grammatically correct the number two you have to make sure that you avoid uh, spelling mistakes I call them silly spelling mistakes because some students, you can just be having, like right now you're used to writing SMSs whereby you skip some letters, whereby you shorten some words. When it comes to features, when it comes to official letters, avoid shortening of words. And number two, avoid, uh, avoid you know, the language which is not official. So again, when looking at language here, we are looking at it has to be grammatically correct, spelling must be on check, and make sure that you stick to that. That is the next thing, that is the next feature that we look at when it comes to official letters. Number three, the next feature is the purpose. Is the purpose. Why are you writing this letter? As I said, the business letters are different. We have a letter of inquiry, uh, we have a letter of request, we have a letter of application, uh, and, and different other letters. So when you're looking at the purpose here, why are you writing this letter? Are you writing to, to request for, for, for goods, for supply of goods? Are you writing to apply for a certain job? Are you writing to recommend someone? So the purpose here must be very clear and direct to the point. You know, don't just, don't just uh, use a very uh, ambiguous language to just talk whatever you're talking about. So just here, when talking about purpose, make sure that you are very brief and then you are straight to the point. Straight to the point. Make sure that you get that. Number four. The next feature is the brevity. The brevity here, some people might think that all the letters must be short. And the brevity, we are not looking at the number of paragraphs that you have. No. Brevity, we are looking at the have communicated the purpose of your letter. If, for instance, you are inquiring about goods, have you said which good and specifically, for instance, let's talk about you inquiring about a certain, a certain course in a certain college. Now, in this course, uh, when you're inquiring about this course, have you inquired about uh, the faculty that offers this course? Number two, uh, how much is the course... Uh, I, are you supposed to pay for how long is the course going to be the relevant, uh, relevant thing that you may ask about whatever you're inquiring. So brevity here, we're looking at the how short your paragraphs are going to be. No, but you're looking at have you communicated uh, whatever you want to communicate. That is, have you communicated your purpose of that letter. 
Uh, the last bit, that is number five, is acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Now, this part, uh, the acknowledgement bit, this is what it means. Uh, at times when you're reading a newspaper, you could come across an advertisement that is talking about a certain school and you need to apply for a certain job. So acknowledgement here we mean that if, for instance, you got that information, where did you get that information from? Uh, did you get it from the newspaper? And if yes, at times newspapers give a reference number. So it means that from, uh, from, from the source that you got the information from, uh, then that means that you need to acknowledge where you got the information from. You need to say if it's a reference number, you need to include that reference number and put it there so at least they can see that this is exactly where you got your information from. So acknowledgement, here we are looking at specifically where do you get the information from. If it's a website, make sure that you quote that a website. If it's a newspaper and the reference number is given, make sure that you also pick that reference number any day. When it comes to acknowledgement, it's basically when you talk about different letters like letter of inquiry, letter of request, uh, application letters, at times they usually have that bit of acknowledgement. So make sure that you get understand that bit. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. Uh, so that is, those are features of official letters. And uh, remember we started with the first one, that is the letter of inquiry that letter of inquiry. So when it comes to official letters, the category. So you make sure that you understand that. So we put the letter of inquiry. Okay. So letter of request. Now, the first one that we started with was letter of inquiry, and I told you that the purpose of writing this letter is, of course, to inquire about a certain good, a certain commodity, eh, a certain commodity, a certain uh, service, and all that kind of stuff. Now, this letter of request, it's different, slightly different in terms of language, in terms of purpose, but it is the same thing. It is the same thing in terms of the format, but now the difference comes in when it comes to the subject, and it comes in with the language so that is that is what we, we need to look at so letter of request another official letter what do we need to do we go back to our format because i told you format is very very important because format carries six months so format which is six months means that uh you are going started what do you need to include when it comes to format number one and i, I know this one if i tell you if you're a student and you're here uh, all of you could be telling me that of Again, here we are uh, that is very important, and I'm not going to go much into details. So, the format again where of the letter of request, we're looking at the address. The way I've said, either you pick block method, or then maybe you pick the indented method. Then, after that, of course, you go to the next bit that is writing your date. Uh, after date, we've said that you write what salutation. And subject here is the one that we are referring to. Here, to pause. This is the letter of request. So, what are you requesting? Are you requesting for a service? Are you requesting for certain goods? Then, here, that is purposely where you come and talk about what are you really requesting about. So, here, the subject is going to be different from the inquiry. And of course, you request either you they supply you with certain goods, either you request that they give you some more, info, more information about a good that you inquired and you never got the real information. Maybe you're requesting them to send the catalogs and look at them and make the final decision. So, make sure that that is exactly what you're going to write on the subject part then you go to the body part body make sure that of course again the purpose of the letter is communicated did they give you the information that you needed yes was it substantial no so what are you telling them that of course here you request them to either supply you with a catalog either supply you with more information maybe feed you more and so that you can be able to make a good uh, decision when it comes to uh the final decision depending on the order and depending on whatever you wanted to have the body and the last bit of course is the signing off the signing off that it's not different from the letter of inquiry here we're looking at you signing off officially this is an official letter you making sure that you write yours faithfully you making sure that you write your you, you sign and then make sure that you write your name at the end of that letter that is the format is going to be the same and if you're marking of course again when it comes to marking you're going to look at all these elements each is going to have one mark 
so make sure that you get to understand that bit so that is the letter of request i want to insist this that at times when it comes to the letters of request uh when it comes to different letters again you can be told that attach uh, uh you can be told to send it through email send it through this send it through this the other channel Any question? Any yeah. question from Zoom? Mm -hmm. There's a question mm -hmm. from Lucy. Mm -hmm. Does it have two addresses? The letter of request is an official letter. Yes, it has two addresses. Must have two addresses. Must have the sender's address. Must have the receiver's address. Of which, in this case, you choose the method. Method is the one that is going to be different. Either you choose the block method or the indicted method. That is going to be different, but it has to have two addresses. So, Ashley, any questions? No. No. Kayla. Kayla, can you can you can you hear me? Okay, Gogi. Any question? No. Lucy. It's okay. Thank you so much and uh, remember to uh, look at the different questions, KCSC questions and see how the questions have been set. This is an area that is highly tested. Uh, you will uh, get to see that different KCSC papers have tested the letters for quite some years. So it is good. It's an area that you need to study over and over again. And again, you will look at the trends that are happening in our country today. Uh, we have uh, this coronavirus that is, of course, having so many things. So you can be told to write an inquiry letter, you can be told to write a request letter, and you can be told to write different other letters. So maybe study over and over again, look at different books. I would recommend that all of you go to uh, Advancing in English Book 4. It has a very good uh, it has a very good example that you can read through and then make sure that you understand the bit. Of course, the one thing that you need to understand is the format to write the letter very well. It's an area that is highly tested. I can tell you that again. And I know m most of the students, you know, ignore this part. So make sure that you outline all the business letters and you go through them again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, your... You're